All right, what's going on guys? Phil DeRue here, performance coach to some of the world's best fighters. And today I'm tackling the world famous Bruce Lee and his training routine. Let's get into it. So before we get into the actual workout routines, I need to go over the actual philosophy and the methodologies of Bruce Lee's training. Basically what you're looking at is a form of vertical integration, meaning that he's building up multiple systems at one time, making sure that he does not delineate or digress or regress any of the training systems that he's been able to produce over a span of time. He's gonna be focusing primarily on strength, flexibility, endurance, or stamina, and overall speed and power for martial arts. And like I said, this all starts at a baseline. So you first need to have the general fitness. You need to have the general physical preparedness in order for you to increase and progress going further. He also did a form of progressive overload, meaning that he increased his intensity and his volume over over time. Now he was a huge proponent of high amounts of volume, but doing that volume with maximal amount of speed. And I'll get into it in a little bit. When it came down to his approach of programming and his plan of action, it was based off of periodization. He believed in tailoring his training to suit the individual needs. So this is what we call individualization and the specific adaptations to the imposed demand. So training in these different modalities that will enhance his ability as a martial artist was something that he put in high regard. The next thing is simplicity and efficiency. He was an advocate of direct and efficient and simple movements for martial arts. He did this through Jeet Kune Do and he also did this in his weight training. Number three, adaptability. Lee's concept of Jeet Kune Do or JKD was based on the idea of being like water, being able to be adaptable, flow and move through any situation. Number four, he believed in complete fitness, not just in martial arts, but improving your cardiovascular health, improving your strength and your flexibility. Number five, mental discipline or what we call mental fortitude. Lee placed a strong emphasis on mental toughness and his ability to overcome the odds. Number six, continued learning, being a lifelong learner and encouraging constant growth through learning and adapting to new situations and new ideas. Number seven, interdisciplinary approach. Lee was known for studying various arts and concepts, not only martial arts and combative sports, but also dance and acrobatics. He also was a huge proponent on building his body. Bodybuilding was something that he started to get into later on in his career, knowing that he had to look a certain way for film. Number eight, the self-expression. One of the core tenets of JKD is to express the individual movement patterns in a combative form. The training methods primarily were based off of speed work and isometric. Now isometrics is a form of training that allows you to get strong in every position. What this means is you're creating maximum amount of force because with low velocity or zero velocity, you get max force production. You can see that through the force velocity curve right here. The lower the velocity, the higher the force output. So with isometrics being no velocity whatsoever or zero velocity, now you're able to increase force production in any range of motion. Isometrics, the use of isos based on the exercise to increase the strength of each position. Now with that position, you can increase the strength in 15 degrees up or down. He used three forms of isometrics. Yielding isometrics, which basically means the eccentric hold. So if I'm doing a bicep curl as I'm coming down and then I stop and pause, or if I'm doing a squat and I stop and pause for a given amount of time, usually Bruce Lee did around six to 12 seconds long. Now that's very long for an isometric hold, but he was doing it more for strength endurance as opposed to maximal force production. Overcoming isometrics is a concentric hold. So basically he would take an immovable object and press or pull into that, whether that be into a pin or using some type of device where it's statically held and you're pushing it up without any movement. And then isotension, that's maximal contraction of the entire body. Think about bodybuilders when they go to flex their muscles. And he would do this in between sets to ramp up his CNS and improve on his full body strengthening and tautness when he went to go do those two finger push-ups, or when you're going to do a dragon flag where it was important for him to stay tight and strong throughout that motion so the second thing is going to be speed work and he believed in moving very fast the concentric action or the shortening of the muscle was meant to be fast and explosive meaning with higher velocities because that would enhance his martial arts capabilities like i said in lower force there's higher velocities so we want to make sure that when you are performing this particular action, whether it be a punch or a press or a squat, 
every concentric action is with high velocity and high amount of intent. So the first routine is the 1965 gym card routine. If you look at it, it's more of a biased bodybuilding style of an approach where he was looking to build hypertrophy. He was looking to build his body up. And this is a form of functional hypertrophy because of the rep range and the intent on the actual movement. Now he started off with a dynamic warm up, and typically it's gonna be skipping rope for about five to 10 minutes. Now when you skip rope, the goal is to maintain a cadence, making sure that you're working the calves, you're working your shoulders a little bit too as well, and the wrist, and then also you're just revving up and getting more higher tissue temperature for the work ahead. This is really good to do, especially for new beginning athletes or fighters trying to get ready for a weight training routine. So the first exercise is gonna be a barbell back squat. Now I'm not loading this up with super high weight. Again, Bruce Lee did 45 pounds. The goal is to move it fast. I'm gonna control it coming down, and then I'm gonna explode on the concentric. Three by 10 repetitions. Whether it's a front squat, a back squat, any type of squat with load, the load is lighter. Now he only did about 45 pounds, that's a barbell. So I think what this was primarily was just another way to rev up his CNS and get his body prepared for the work ahead. So it's a three by 10, but the concentric action was very fast. The eccentric was controlled and the concentric was fast and explosive. Again, 10 reps on the squat. So then from there, it's all gonna be superset it. You're gonna have a one A, one B approach and I would typically leave around 30 to 45 seconds in between each exercise. The first exercise is gonna be a French press. This is a form of tricep extension. It's gonna be overhead. You can use a dumbbell or a barbell or an easy bar. You can do this either standing or seated and I prefer you do it standing just to activate the core muscles, work on the rectus abdominals as you're going to do your extension of the tricep. Superset that with an incline curl. So we went from triceps to biceps. Now with the incline curl, make sure you're at a 45 degree incline. The dumbbells are gonna be at your side by your hips and then you're gonna curl up to the shoulders, maintaining that supinated position or your palms out as you go to curl the dumbbells up. Four by six with every rep in the concentric action being as fast and explosive as possible. The next set of exercises, 1A is a French press again. What I would typically do is change up maybe the modality or the implement or tool that you're using. So instead of doing dumbbells, maybe you do an easy bar this time. Four by six again, then go into concentration curls. This can be done with dumbbells or it can be done with an easy bar or barbell, making sure again, you're staying with that four by six repetitions. The next set of exercises is gonna be first, 1A, a weighted push-up. Now you can use a weight vest, you can use plates, you can use chains, you can use a partner pushing you down, but the goal is again to maintain your speed as you go through all reps. It's three by 10 here, making sure that the concentric action is explosive. The second exercise, a two-handed curl, three sets of eight repetitions. With the two-handed curl, this can be a barbell, this could be an easy bar, just another way to hit the biceps. Next set of exercises, 1A is gonna be just a tricep stretch. So you're gonna go into that same position as the French press with the arm overhead, shoulder flexed, and then you're gonna go ahead and breathe for eight breaths and holding that actual stretch, making sure that you're stretching the entire triceps and then also some of the lats too as well. Right from there, you're gonna go into dumbbell circles. So this is where you're gonna start to work in the forearms. You're gonna do four sets to failure. Now he called it infinity sets, but basically what that means is zero reps left in the tank. Do that again like I said, for four sets total, and then move on. The next set of exercises, reverse curls. Now reverse curls are gonna hit the brachial radialis. It's gonna hit the forearms in general. You're gonna do four by six, making sure that you maintain that speed, but in good form. One B right after that is gonna be wrist curls. So now you're gonna be working the flexor muscles of the forearms, and you're gonna do four sets to failure or infinity again. Then the last set of exercises, we're gonna hit the rectus abdominals, and we're gonna hit the calves. So you're gonna do a sit up, body weight only, full range of motion at five sets of 12 repetitions. Superset that with calf raises either standing or seated at five sets to 20 repetitions. When you do the calf raise, you wanna get a full stretch at the bottom. That's gonna definitely help build and grow the calves as much as you can and making sure that when you go up, 
you're exploding through the concentric action just like Bruce Lee would do. On top of this routine, he would do this three times a week, but he would also run or do four to five miles three to four times per week and even cycling to build up his leg endurance. Let's move on to the second routine. Now, this is after he decided to really start working in more movement, right? So full body movements, compound lifts in the foundational movement patterns and different planes of motion that were going to enhance his ability as a, as a martial artist. So let's go over the circuit training. Now the circuit training was three times per week because it was highly intense. And the way he broke this down was again ahead of his time, but he would do a form of daily undulation or DUP. One time a week would be maximal effort, meaning that he would go into a max attempt or max intent for each particular exercise in every rep and every set. Then two times a week would be sub-maximal. So whether it be mid-intensity or low-intensity, that's how he would structure his microcycle throughout the weeks and the months and years. So the circuit training consisted of a clean and press. He would do two sets of eight repetitions. Again, those eight reps were explosive. Right after that, he would go right into barbell curls, two sets of eight repetitions. Then into some sort of squat, whether it be a barbell back squat or a front squat, that was two sets of 12 repetitions. Then into a bench press, two sets of six then into good mornings or a hinge position two sets of eight and then barbell pullovers two sets of eight so if you look at it you're hitting a press pattern a squat pattern you're hitting a hinge pattern he's also bicing out the biceps with the barbell curls but at the same time you're also hitting the triceps with the bench press and you're also hitting the triceps a little bit with the clean and press so the shoulders are being worked the triceps the biceps the quads the hamstrings and also obviously the trunk muscles or the core muscles are also being worked here in this circuit so, all right let's look at the martial arts training now. His martial arts training consisted of basic drills, shadow boxing, bag work, heavy bag, light bag, even a speed bag, and then also sparring. So he sparred a lot. He did a lot with his clients, with the people that he was working with, with people on set, but he would do that a lot just to keep him focused, keep him engaged, and making sure that his timing and his rhythm was on point. Every morning, he would run three to four miles. Then he would wait, usually around either late morning or afternoon, and then go do his skills training or his martial arts training and that would be consisted of shadow kickboxing you're going to do six rounds of three minutes on one minute off and every round is going to be focused on a particular aspect of his game whether that be footwork punches movement quality like how he's moved in and out of the pocket being very elusive working on his kicks and then just working on coordination in general the goal was to focus on that speed and the intent of the movement so every strike was like he was in front of an opponent the next thing he would do was skip rope for five minutes again probably getting a shake out making sure that he's still staying active in functional training improving on his fitness overall and then also getting twitchy so that he can move a little bit better throughout the training session then he goes into heavy bag work this is going to be three minutes and one minute recovery the three minutes on the first heavy bag you're going to be working kicks and all different style of kicks right side kicks front kicks spin kicks roundhouse kicks so on and so forth you want to make sure that you're doing that efficiently and working on your form your technique and the power that you produce into the actual bag the next Next thing on the heavy bag is now you're going to focus on punches so that's going to be three total minutes at one minute recovery then you're going to be focusing on hooks crosses jabs uppercuts spinning back fists things of that nature anything from a upper body striking perspective is what he wanted to work on with that heavy bag in the second phase of his second three minute round then he's going to move on to a light bag so that's going to be three minutes on one minute off and that's really where you're going to be working on speed and accuracy timing efficiency things of that nature this could be a very light bag where it's something that you have to be consistent in the speed, consistent in where you punch, and then also you're not pushing through your punches, right? This is where you get to snap and where he's really focusing on quickness and speed. The last thing that he did was shadow kickboxing again for three minutes long and one minute recovery. This I primarily would think it was more for movement, right? Just to get a cool down and just make sure that he's fine tuning the details on his actual way of martial arts and how he moved through his Jeet Kune Do approach. The drills are to help improve efficiency. So all these drills are going to increase your efficiency of movement, your efficiency of your strikes, how to turn them over, and also how to place your punches and kicks. Shadow boxing is to improve your speed and movement quality. The speed bag is to help improve hand speed, reaction timing, your rhythm. And then the last thing, sparring. Now sparring is obviously very important for every fighter. It puts an opponent in front of you, what you're actually going to have to do in a competition or maybe even on the streets. So it helps you with 
timing. It helps you with coordination. It helps you with self-control. It helps you to calm down the nerves. When somebody's in front of you throwing kicks and punches and knees and elbows, you can withstand that pressure and be able to cope with those stresses. So it's very important for a martial artist or someone that is a competitive fighter to get in there and spar, especially in the beginning stages of your career, at least two to three times per week. Now, as a veteran, you can kind of taper that off, but if you're trying to maintain your level of coordination, your timing, right, your distance, you want to make sure that you're sparring. All right, so that's a wrap. I hope I didn't disappoint any of your Bruce Lee fans. If I messed anything up, don't hit me on the comment section, please. Once again, iconic Bruce Lee, man. I was a Bruce Lee fan. I'm still am a Bruce Lee fan. Just the way he carried himself, his philosophy of training, his philosophy on life, the way he would captivate an audience, the way he would speak. It was so fluent and so clear and precise and deep. All respect to the legend, the icon, Bruce Lee. If you guys like this video, let me know down below. Hit the comments. Also hit the like button and and share this if anyone needs to learn a little bit that is specific to what Bruce Lee may have done back in the day. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.